because you represent a group called Save Our Savers. Yes. That's, that's right. I mean, essentially, we're trying to represent anybody who's not heavily borrowed. Mm. So it isn't really just savers, it's also pensions, people who are about to become pensioners. Anybody trying to cope on a fixed income who is, of course, suffering terribly from low interest rates and high and rising inflation. So, so what put you personally onto this? Why, why have you sort of got involved in this area? Uh, wh- because I just think the cause is absolutely so right. And nobody is speaking out on behalf of savers. I mean, you may have seen in the press that on Thursday, while the uh, Bank of England was making its decision about more QE, uh, the best way perhaps of avoiding um, getting it wrong with the number of T's in the word, um, as they were announcing QE, there were a group of savers outside the Bank of England protesting about how unfair the bank's actions are to the majority of people in the country. Over 20 million people uh, classify themselves as savers rather than borrowers. Um, and it was quite interesting that for the first time in ages, uh, Mervyn King, when he was interviewed that day, was at least talking about what is happening to savers, whereas before he's just chosen to ride rubshot over them. The Bank of England, unfortunately, seemed to think of savers as being something of a nuisance. And, uh, Simon, are you personally affected by this? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I have savings, uh, not a great quantity, yeah, I have yeah. to say. Um, but yes, I'm personally affected. And I mean, anybody who is, uh, you know, moving on to a pension, particularly private pensions, I don't know if you saw, but a third of the value has been wiped off private pensions in the last three years. Anybody who's about to retire is either going to have to keep working or they're going to have to accept a much lower pension. The Bank of England driving interest rates down doesn't just affect those people who've got, you know, a few pence or even quite a lot of money salted away. Um, it affects anybody who's going to be moving on to a fixed income. Yeah, and I say, well, you know, at the moment, this, this money is effectively being channeled through the banks, isn't it? And uh, it, it might, there's an argument that if we're going to put this money into play, at least, at least put it into our hands. Well, so at least we can have the fun of spending it. You well, know I mean? yes, I mean, that, you know that's never going to happen. But, <laughs> well, it did in the United States, though, didn't they give everybody, well, at the start well, of the credit crunch, they actually gave everybody a, a sum of money to spend. Didn't well, they? and that didn't really work either. The, the way they're doing it, and mm. let's try and even get an idea of the concept of the amount of money. Yeah. We, we banned around these billions of pounds but yeah. let's just explain a billion is a thousand million so what they're doing is pumping out into the economy 75,000 million pounds which would be about 1250 quid for each of us the problem is they've done it once before they claim it led to growth of about one and a half percent they admit it increased inflation by about one and a half percent but did it actually spark growth in the economy? No, no more than the low interest rates have done. What actually happened was it went to boost the bank's balance sheet. It went to boost the bank, bankers' bonuses. And we all love that, don't we? And a lot of the money went abroad. It ended up depressing the pound, bringing inflation back into the country. It is a clumsy, appalling tool. I mean, they, they love the idea of doing it because on their charts it seems to be, uh, you know, going to produce some growth miraculously. Well, if... If creating money from thin air was the solution to our problem, why stop at 75 billion more? Let's have 500 billion. Let's have, let's have everything you could possibly imagine, and suddenly we'll become incredibly wealthy. As your earlier caller, I can't remember if it was Johnson or John's, John said, mm. all they're doing is delaying solving the problem. You cannot solve this problem of too much debt by adding more debt to it. And while at the moment the country seems relatively secure, all those problems you see in Greece on the news and you sit smugly thinking, well, at least that's not us. Mm. That is the way we are going. And we have short-term solutions from the Bank of England. We have politicians who are only worried about getting elected and think nothing about what the next generation, about what our children are going to suffer or the generation after that. And, you know, the Bank of England effectively has declared war on savers and pensioners and at Save Our Savers, we think it's time to fight back. So, it, so you know, we tend to be the quiet, silent majority, and that is why they are taking advantage of it. Well, look, on Wall Street, they've got this Occupy Wall Street process yes, going at yes. the moment. I'm not suggesting they necessarily do that, but I think we have to start making a noise. We have got to show them 
that we cannot be taken advantage of forevermore. Simon, Simon stay there, if you will. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I mean, no, no, it's fine. Rant I, mode, I, I want, I mean, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> it's the Saturday soapbox, Simon. Anybody who's listening is welcome to climb aboard. Payne and Simon, that'll be typical of so many pensioners listening, because, you know, inflation's, by recent standards, is ripping ahead, isn't it? Four and a half percent at the moment. And well, it's four and a half percent on the measure they choose to use, yeah. which is CPI. You think 5. it's... 5.2 for the RPI, but yeah. in fact, I'm afraid pensioners suffer, you know, a far higher rate of inflation because they've got less money and they're concentrating on essentials, things like food and fuel, and we've seen how the prices of those are ripping heads. Now, the Bank of England claims inflation is going to go down, but it always claims it's about to go down, and it always gets it wrong. <laughs> It so, Simon, funny, you know, Simon... The is, it's not funny. No, I mean, no. I, I know, no, it's, it's I, black humour, almost. You couldn't make it up. Is, is savings, is saving a mug's game, then? At the moment, it is. So we had some young people at the demo, and they were saying, well, why should we save? Is one guy was saying, I've got not percent interest on my credit card. And you think, well, that's, that's the source reason we're in this mess in the first place. Mm. But you have to consider over the long term, as your caller said, even if you're losing money, you've got to try and at least make sure you're going to have enough money to secure your future. But that becomes ever more difficult if you have inflation taking away your capital. Um, it, it, it's appalling. And what is worse is the Bank of England's job it's to maintain the value of our money. I picked up a few booklets from their rather ridiculous museum um, when we did the demo, and it's full of explanations about this, about how low and stable inflation is crucial to a thriving economy. The role of the Monetary Policy Committee at the Bank of England is to keep inflation to the government's target of 2%, and yet inflation is, uh, on their own measure, is going to 5%, and QE will have made it... Um, uh, e even more likely it's going to go higher. So they're not doing their legal job. If we had money, we would be taking them to court, frankly, because they are breaking the law and they're being irresponsible with the money in all of our pockets. And something needs to happen. Mervyn King says we are facing the worst financial crisis since the 30s, possibly ever. Well, who has been governor of our central bank for the past eight years? Who is sitting on a pension pot of £5 million? Mervyn King, why didn't he stop it happening? He's the one who's been in charge. Simon, great to speak to you. 